what is going on people welcome back to that car vlog channel if you don't already know i'm andy and this disassembled thing is my 1976 chevy c10 now we haven't seen this thing in a while because i've been doing other stuff and haven't had a lot of time to work on it and i've actually been doing a lot of stuff off camera to this thing uh you know trying to get some stuff done in whatever spare time i have the main focus of this video, however long it takes to make, is going to be the front suspension drop and steering components. So here's the main thing that we're doing on the front. This is a lowering leaf spring. This provides two inches of drop in the front of the truck. But it's one of the last things we'll be doing to the front because there's a lot of work to do. Now I've already gotten a bunch done. Just kind of trying to figure out, you know, make sure that I know what I'm doing and know, you know, how to make the video. So here I've got this thing down to control arms. There's no more steering knuckle. I've actually taken off one tie rod already on one side, one tie rod assembly. And I'm gonna use the other side to show how we got to this point. Now you can probably see I've been trying to clean up this control arm. Uh, it had a lot, it has had a lot of thick buildup of gunk on it. I'm not trying to get the, all the all the rust off per se, because I have a rust reformer spray that I'll that I'm going to put on that. But let's see what I've done to the carport first before we get on what we're doing. So I've got me a Harbor Freight sandblaster kit. This helping me to get some of that nasty gunk off there. It's also going to help me take care of the frame and back, places where I might not be able to get a wire brush, things like that. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing back here, get it down to something like this, and then use the rust reformer spray. Now I've got a section here that I did. You see it's this nice matte black. This is that rust reformer spray. This is supposed to take this minor rusty surface, turn it into something that's protected and paintable, keep it from going any further I've already um, I took the bumper off the back already and this is actually one of the mounting brackets you see I've taken it I've cleaned it up there's still some pitting I'm not worried about that but uh, I take took it off clean this up painted it with the rust reformer two coats I got another one hanging over there as far as the bumper itself not really sure if I'm going to reuse that or not. It is bent. I don't know if I really want to try to straighten that or not. I would really like to have a chrome bumper, so I may just replace this, but this is my bumper right here. License plate still attached. I did a lot of work getting this carport cleared out and workable. We had so much crap stored up underneath here, you couldn't move. So I've got my red toolbox. I got these up under here. I've chained them to the carport, so they ain't gonna go anywhere. Got my my big air compressor there. I think that's a 20 gallon. It's set up. It's running some line. I've got some thicker line over there hanging on the part shelf, and I replaced the part shelf. So here's my thick rubber hose. Replace the part shelf with one of these good, expensive, sturdy ones that I did not have to pay full price for, bought it used. And did away with that flimsy thing right there. Thank God. Excuse that mess, that needs to be fixed. Just try to get this place a little more workable. I don't have all my tools thrown all over this bench. Um, I actually use it as a bench instead of a place to keep tools for weeks on end. Uh, the kitty pulls underneath because I was blasting. That's catching the uh, the particles. So right now, that's pretty much the progress on the truck. Uh, I have already done the rear suspension drop. You can see the leaf spring shackles and hangers and shocks. I've already done the video on that. I'll put up a card somewhere up top of the screen here to a uh, to that and link it below as well. Right now, we're going to get started taking the passenger side of this apart. 
and get to show you how we got to the point where we're at on the other side. So first thing I gotta do is remove this caliper and pads and brake rotor before I can get to anything else. It's a bit of a process. So first thing I gotta do, remove the brake caliper. Now here I have a 3 8 inch hex or allen key. I would prefer to have the socket kind of this that goes on my ratchet, but I don't own that. And I can't, really can't go out and buy it right now. So this is gonna be a bit tedious, but they will come out. I got this, I got the hammer for breaking things loose, and uh, let's get it done. see the first guide pin is now out that did take a couple of minutes but it's out now it's going to get one out of the bottom now we got both guide pins out the caliper maybe with a little bit of encouragement we'll come out of there uh, things are a bit rusty down here. It's been exposed to the elements. But this is how it comes off. It just needs a little encouragement. I'm not tapping very hard because I don't want to risk breaking the calipers. I would like to use these over. Let's tap in right here where the end of the guide pins go through. Little by little. All the while trying not to let them fall on the ground. There we go. There it is. All right. There is the brake caliper, and the pads are falling out as it comes off, which is fine. There's a bug of some sort that's made a home in there. Not to let that hang by the line if I can help it. I don't know what that is. <sighs> Gone is what that is. Alright, so pads are off. They actually got a bit of life left in them. Yeah, they're they're getting close, but they're alright. I may just go ahead and replace them when the time comes. Now we have to get the rotor off. And that's a bit of a chore because you have to take the wheel bearings off as well. Now technically, you probably could do all the work I'm gonna do with this assembly on, but taking this apart is gonna make things a lot lighter. Keep in mind, rotors are heavy, especially these big rotors. So first thing I'm gonna do is take my flathead here and just start peeling away at this dust cap. Little by little, around the rotor, It'll eventually pop off. There's coming. All right. And there it is. There's the dust cap. The dust cap's off. I'll get my needle nose and remove the cotter pin so it is kind of folded around underneath this center nut. I'll take a minute to get out. Uh, I put this on when I did the wheel bearings on this truck, so I know it's on there good. Although I know how I did it, so I know I can get it off. And here's the cotter pin. It's out. Um, it's actually not in bad shape. It was new when I put it in. I could probably use this over, but I'm not going to. I have to get the center nut off. And thanks to my landlord being awesome and loaning me tools, I have the big stuff required for it. This is a 1 and 1 16th inch socket. So I've got that and I've got the head bashing ratchet to go with it which has the wrong socket on it. There we go. Shouldn't be too
too hard. Nah, I just can't. It broke right loose. Of course, I have to be real careful putting it back on, not to over-torque it with the leverage you get from that giant socket. Center nuts coming off. The spindle nut, whatever you want to call it. There it is. It's a castle nut of sorts for the cutter pin. I'll drop that down to the dust cover for safety. Behind that washer is a nut, a round nut with one flat side on it. I'm going to take my screwdriver and this here pick, just pull this thing straight out. There we go. It's actually easier than it was on the other side. This pulls off, same thing, put it down in the dust cover. Now I can pull the wheel, the um, rotor off, and this rotor, like I was saying, is all one piece from here all the way up to here. And the inner and the wheel bearing set inside of this. It's also the hub. When I pull this, the outer wheel bearing is going to try to fall out, and I've just got to make sure to catch that. Okay, and so the wheel bearing did not fall out. There it is, it's still in the hub. The other side actually did fall out on the ground almost, so I just have to clean that up. These I can reuse over. These are perfectly good wheel bearings. Nothing wrong with them. They're pretty much almost new. So I'm, I'm gonna use these over. But here's a spindle, it's got some grease on it. That's just fine. Uh, I will go ahead and wipe that down just for you know handling purposes. But it is ready we are ready for the next step now so the spindles cleaned off that's just for handling purposes like i said i took the dust cap that has all had all the nut and the cotter pin and stuff in it set it down on the front of the hub part of the brake rotor now i'm not going to flip it over because i don't want the outer wheel bearings to fall out but underneath on the back there is the inner wheel bearings but they're held in there with a seal that is actually pressed in those aren't going to fall out. So now I'll just, I'll just take this over there and put it on my part shelf and we can get to the next step. Alright, now we get this plate here off. This back cover. It's very simple. There's one, two, three half inch bolts and that comes off. Next step is to remove the castle nuts that hold on the upper and lower ball joints. First thing is to get the cotter pins out. Now on the other side these were an absolute pain. For one, they were caked in crap. And two, they were just folded in weird ways and they've been in there a very long time. So we're going to get those out and then we'll come back and discuss what sizes we need to remove the castle nuts. Okay, so we finally got the cotter pins out of the upper and lower ball joint nuts. And uh, now this is one cotter pin. And this is the lower. This is, uh, this is probably the biggest pain I've ever had getting potter, cotter pins out of any, anything. Anyhow. Let's go back over here to the truck. I'm going to remove one more cotter pin, and it's right here on the underside of the tie rod end. Once I do that, all my cotter pins will be out that I need out for now, and we can begin the process of separating the steering knuckle from the ball joints. Hopefully, this one will be a little easier. All right, now we're going to first work on this castle nut here for the upper ball joint. Now, what we're going to need get my light in place here. Gonna cooperate. There we go. What we gonna need is a 7 8 socket to take this off. Now I've got this on a half inch drive, a big ratchet, so hopefully with just the leverage of this big long ratchet, should be able to get this thing off of here. Let's make sure it's unloosened. There we go. Now I had to go ahead and allow the entirety of the steering gear to turn <laughs> towards the passenger side because the steering wheel lock is not present and so trying to break this loose will actually turn it but that actually worked like a dream um, so far the nuts are coming off better than the cotter pins we'll take that down and then we'll get onto the bottom now this lower castle nut is not a 7 8 inch, this is a 1 and 1 16 inch. So we have to get out 
the big three quarter inch drive tools again. That means this monster ratchet that is probably going to knock the tripod over when I go to turn it. If I can even get it in here. And there we have it. Top and bottom were removed. Big pain in the butt. Especially because in this area, that big three quarter inch ratchet can only sit at a slight angle. It can't sit straight up and down. So the whole time you're saying a prayer that this big 12 point socket isn't going to slip and start rounding things off. But it came off nicely. Um, the leverage from this long ratchet definitely is a good thing to have. It's getting dark now, so when we're able, we'll come back to this and start separating this knuckle from these ball joints. And here we are next day. Now, the next step in this process is to separate the ball joints top and bottom from this whole steering knuckle. I've turned the steering components towards the right of the truck so we can see more clearly what's going on. Now, I did buy this at Harbor Freight. It's uh, it's supposed to be the tool to remove ball joints and tie rod ends, but this truck's, you know, being an old 70 models full size Chevy, it's got some heavy duty components. This thing just will not, and I've tried, it will not open up far enough to remove the ball joints. So, this is for tie rods only, at least on this truck. And what I have here instead, I also borrowed from the landlord, this is pickle fork although this goes in a you know a pneumatic gun a pneumatic chisel this isn't the long kind that you hammer, hammer with so in order to make this work I just got my vice grips I'm gonna clamp that on there I have to make some adjustments to do it tighten it up a little bit That's nice and tight. That's what's going to be used as a handle. And we got the big hammer again. Let's take this and shove it in between the metal of the steering knuckle and the ball joint itself. Try to center it as much as possible. We're just going to start beating away on this thing. that separated it didn't really do much flying apart there but we're going to move on to the top now and what I've done as a precaution was just take this jack here and put it up underneath this lower control arm because the way it's said is that when this stuff does separate the tension from that coil spring is going to make stuff start flying apart and we don't want stuff flying apart we want to pull it apart so now we're going to take the pickle fork and vice grips again and this time we're going to shove them same thing up top between the middle of the steering knuckle and the ball joint and let's start beating it again and yes it is a bit of a process And there it is. It is separated from the top ball joint. That actually popped off nicely. That didn't take too long. Now we'll carefully lower the jack. Alright. As carefully as the jack will allow me to. Push that off to the side. Now the steering knuckle will pull away. But before we do that, we're going to detach the tie rod. Now good, i got my brake caliper hanging on by the wire. I probably should have detached the tie rod first. I really didn't think about that. But it won't be any problem to get that off. For that, we'll just use the tie rod separator. But first, we got to get this castle nut off the bottom. Okay, your castle nut size is a 15 sixteenths. So I've got one here on a half inch drive. I'm just going to turn this like you would anything else. It may require me to hold things up as I break it loose. And of course, when things won't break, we get the big hammer. Whatever I did with that. There it is. 
Yeah, I should have taken this off before removing the, the knuckle from the ball joints. So I'm paying for that a little bit, but that's what you get for not doing stuff right. All right, here comes that nut. And of course, suddenly I can't use a ratchet. There we go. This stuff's likely been on here for all 44 years of this truck's life, as far as I know anyway. So sometimes it is a bit difficult to remove. Now luckily I don't have to use any of these over. All the new components come with hardware. And so I don't have to worry about that. Okay, now here's where I use the, the separator tool. So this tool here, quite easy. You slide the forked part in between the metal of the steering knuckle and the tie rod end. You may have to give it a few taps because this has to go on, on the end of the bolt shaft. So let's get that big hammer again. Give that a few taps. All right. I'll swap out our 15 sixteenths for a three quarter. And this time we're going to go tightening. We'll go ahead and turn that to where it touches. And then as we tighten this, this tie rod end should separate. And I really hope I got the hammer aimed right. So we'll start tightening and it should push that, that tie rod end out of the steering knuckle. which is likely going to cause it to fall because it's probably the only thing left holding it up because of me not doing it right. And there it goes quite violently, I might add. All right, now our knuckle should just pull right off this lower. And there it is. We now have the steering knuckle off. Now we can start working on getting these upper and lower ball joints off. That's also going to be fun. Alright, so now we're going to take out the lower ball joint. And now I do have a ball joint press kit. I do have it, but I'm going to use this for installation. I'm going to remove them a bit more forcefully, but it'll really be fine. This is the way that I did it on the other side. We'll take his jack and I'm going to just run it up until it's holding, until it's supporting this lower control arm. A little push, make sure it's really got it. Okay. I'm just going to take his here wrench, just something for me to hold this thing still. I'm going to take the big hammer and just going to start beating this thing out. Like I said, I don't care if I damage it because it's getting replaced. camera. The other side actually went a little bit easier. Uh, with a bit more beating, it came out. So the lower ball joints on these trucks are just press fit. So with the right actions, you can just pound these things out. The new one, I'll have to use the press to get it back in. It's just a lot easier than lining up all those components. Now, we we'll get to the bear of this job being the upper ball joints. The reason I call this the bear of this job is these upper ball joints are riveted in. Now you see this little ripper part. This actually fell off when I was beating the bottom one out and I kind of whacked it. Not a problem. Once again, it's being replaced. Now I had scraped a lot of junk off the top of this thing. Uh, just because, I mean, this thing was absolutely caked with just years, possibly decades of road grime and stuff. I mean, it was caked up so high you couldn't even see this grease fitting. Which at this point I'd say is probably not even usable as a grease fitting. Doesn't really matter because this is getting replaced, like I keep saying. I was going to keep scraping a little bit more of this off. But now what I've got to do is get my angle grinder 
and grind off one, two, three, four rivets. And that's going to take a hot minute. So hopefully we can play the video speeds and time lapse this thing a little bit. Alright, so now I've got my angle grinder. Reposition my light a little bit. And now we're just going to start grinding away at these rivets. There's four of them again until we can get to the next step of pounding this thing off of here. tell on camera but I've got this ground down now to where you can't tell the difference between where the middle of the ball joint and the middle of the rivet is there's just a very faint circle right about here where you can tell the difference but you have to have your eyes right upon it so that one is ready for separation now I just have to do it three more times all right so now all four rivets are ground off to that you can't tell where the rivet meets the metal stage, which is what we're looking for. Just a very faint circle at all four points. So now, you get my next big tool. Which is this guy right here. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take this thing and I'm going to wedge it in between the two pieces of metal. The ball joint plate and the control arm metal. I'm going to take our good friend the big hammer. And I'm just going to start beating the absolute crap out of this thing. Now this is going to take a little while. Because I've got to be able to drive this in between. And so yeah, this is going to take a lot of beating with this. Probably with other pry bars. This is going to take a while. So just be prepared. It's going to take a long time. actually changed over to a set of smaller chisels so this is one of that set and this is one that's actually slightly smaller and hopefully this is going to help me get in here a little bit better now I'm pretty sure I didn't have these chisels when I did the other side either that or I just couldn't find them well, hopefully this will wedge in there a little bit better and then I can get the bigger stuff in there. And finally, on evening three of this part of the project, there is the upper ball joint on the ground and the upper control arm with no ball joint attached. Now there are some spots here, you can tell maybe where the metal's kind of raised, we have to grind that down flush. Not a big deal, that'll just take a minute or two. But here is the arsenal that it took to get that stupid thing off. We've got a propane torch, big hammer, a couple of pry bars, three chisels, a punch that um, got a wee bit damaged, there it is right there, and uh, another punch in my vice grip pliers. This thing was an absolute pain to get off, worse than the driver's side. You see here where my grinder kind of contacted the control arm, not a big deal, it just shed a little metal off, I'm not going to worry about that. I'll just grind these things down to where they're smooth and flush-ish and We'll be good to go. But finally, that ball joint's off. And we can get around to uh, getting, getting around to the leaf spring next. All right, so next we're going to remove the lower part of the shock from this lower control arm. Here's the end of it. It's a three quarter inch, both ends, nut and bolt. So take this here, three quarter ratchet, or wrench, I apologize, opening wrench. Just gonna stick it on the nut. 
I'm going to take the three quarter inch socket on the bolt and break this thing loose. Most of the way out, I had to put a jack up underneath the uh, lower control arm. I forgot that I needed to support it. With the, with the supporting lower control arm, the bolt won't bind and it'll come right out. Now I can't know if we're going to be able to just pull the shock. Yeah, so we just pull the shock, it'll swing back, and now we, are, we have it detached from the lower control arm. As I release the jack, see how much lower the lower control arm falls. And we'll just kind of slide that off to the side. And now we should be able to pull the leaf spring out. It's still going to be tough. I keep saying leaf spring, the coil spring. We should be able to keep pull, pull this coil spring out. It's still going to be a bit tough, but not nearly as tough as it would be if we hadn't gotten that out. So, I'm just going to employ some pry, some pry mechanisms, and I'm going to try not to smack myself in the face with this coil spring. to get the other side out so hopefully this won't be much harder although it has been a bit harder to disassemble this side i think maybe the nasty grease and grime on that side might actually lubricate things a bit for the disassembly this can be a bit of a challenge i'm gonna keep working this thing and there's the old coil spring so now we are disassembled i will have to, i'll have to relocate the brake caliper move it over a little bit and I may even have to get some new brake line I don't know if you can see that but let's get the light down here brake line on the other side looks okay but this one got a couple spots you can tell it's just it's getting rough so we may need to get some brake lines for it but that is off thank god this is a rough disassembly on this side I'm not even gonna lie it was a little rougher than the other side so with that, uh, we're going to take, we're actually going to take a few days and probably not work on this. Rest my arm a little bit because all that hammer swinging really wore it out. I don't do a lot of that. And uh, come back to this next time I have some ample time. We start to do, doing a little more disassembly and some cleanup. And we are back underneath the truck. It's been hmm, a while since the last clip. Now we have to take the detach the inner tie rod right here from this center link. So we've got another big nut here. I had to scrape crud off of that too. First things first, gotta get this cotter pin out of here too. My needle nose and hopefully not much else. Okay, cotter pin is out. Now we need our 15 sixteenths. Again, it's a half inch drive. I've got it on extension. And we're going to remove this nut. Okay, so I had to remove the extension and beat it with a hammer again. But now it's coming off. Okay, nuts off. I'm going to pull the steering system over as far as it'll go. At this point, it pulls nice and easy. And then, where'd it go? We get to employ the popper again. Same, same scenario. The fork end. Fits right here in between the rubber and the metal. And then this end fits over the end of the bolt there. We use our three quarter inch and we just tighten away at this thing until it pops. Okay, that was extremely violent. It's a good thing I was holding the other end in my hand 
it's still smacking my wrist up against the control arm. And my finger into something, I have no earthly idea, but it skinned it a little bit. But that's off. That was a chore. Now, I'm not going to separate these ball joint pieces. You got your outer, your inner, and your adjusting sleeve. I'm not going to separate these pretty much ever. Because I'm actually going to use the positioning of these existing pieces to assemble the new ones when it comes time. And then hopefully the alignment should be close enough that I can drive it to a shop and get it fine-tuned. Now we're not, I'm not quite done taking apart steering components yet. I'm going to drop this center link now. Now the, for anyone who somehow doesn't know the center link is literally what it says. It runs from this idler arm to the pitman arm that attaches to the steering box. Just makes it so that the left, the right side does the same thing the left side does when you turn the steering wheel. I'm replacing both the pitman arm on the other side and this idler arm so this is going to come off as well. So same procedure is going to happen. Remove this cotter pin, remove this castle nut, pop this thing with the popper. come back over to the driver's side here's a steering box up here this is the pitman arm this is the one that links directly to the steering box we got to do the same thing over here remove this cotter pin this 15 16 nut and use the popper to pop that off and then the center link will drop completely out and we can get to getting the rest of this off okay so it's a bit wrong about the center link will just drop out As you can see in here big cross member underneath the engine it sits on that and the, ge the geometry is just right where it won't just fall but it is detached from both this arm and the other one so now I've just got to come to this end of the arm and take this off and of course using the exact same procedure as getting this end off 15 16 nut using the tie, tie rod end popper pushed it right out of there I gotta do is somehow wiggle all this crap out of here, get it separated. And with some wiggling, here's the idler arm. It is out. There's the center link. It's on the ground now. I'll worry about the pitman arm at a later time because I'm actually probably either going to replace or rebuild the steering box. But that is it for taking apart, pretty much for taking apart the steering components. So that's it. That's the front end steering components, the ball joints, the tie rod ends, the idler arm, and the center link all taken apart and ready to go on to other things. So, now that's done. In the next video we do on this thing, I'll be tackling these control arms because in the truck, I've got a box of control arm bushings. So I'll be taking those off, cleaning them up, painting them, replacing the control arm bushings and putting them back on. We'll see how many videos it takes to do the front of this truck. But for now, that is going to be it. I uh, hope you enjoyed following along with this process of taking this front end apart and are looking forward to continuing with this project along with me. I hope you find it somewhat educational, somewhat entertaining, or you're just bored and found something not good to watch. Whatever the case may be, thanks for watching. If you want to continue to see more things from me on this truck and on this truck and whatever else I can figure out to do, Make sure you subscribe to the channel, ring the notification bell so you'll know when the next video goes up. Make sure to give this video a, a good thumbs up, leave me a comment, tell me what you thought. If you feel so inclined, 
go follow me on Instagram and Facebook at that car vlog channel. I've been trying to post more things up there in general. You know, sometimes I'll post little pictures of other things I'm doing on the truck, like on nice, like when I have a nice day and I can do some painting on the frame. As you can see, it's coming along little by little. And then cleaning up the frame and painting it. I'll actually post pros progress on Instagram that isn't in the videos. Although most of it is going to be videos. Anyways, once again, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy. Make sure to like, share, subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.